Welcome back, you found Fritz. Today's video is a combination of a recording tutorial for new learners and a budget-minded review of the newer, with two E's, NW410 two-pack small diaphragm condenser microphones. They are currently on sale at the suspiciously low price of $102.99 on Amazon.com. I will test them as drum overheads and as a spaced pair on an acoustic guitar. As always, you can find links to the products I discuss in this video in the description below. Let's jump in. The microphones come with some standard documentation and some information about the included capsules and their polar patterns. The polar patterns are cardioid, omni, and supercardioid. For this video, I solely focused on the cardioid pattern because it's what is most typical for studio recording situations. The mics are heavier than I expected, and they feel well made. This is a good sign when dealing with a budget-oriented product. The included microphone clips also feel well made, and I don't expect them to dip or drift at all when holding the mics. For recording the acoustic guitar, I have the mic set up using an on-stage MY700 stereo mic bar. This is a great option because the bar is just wide enough to position the mics where I need them and it provides a simple solution for keeping the mics at the same distance from the guitar. This will keep them in phase with each other. If you don't know what phasing means, let's just say for now that it will keep the recording from sounding unnatural in a bad way. I've used budget-friendly XLR cables into a budget-friendly SSL2 audio interface, which is great for the money but I'll get more into that in a separate review. Just a quick note about microphone placement. Both of the mics are aimed directly at the guitar, one is placed at the 12th fret, and one is aimed at the body. Both microphones are about six inches away from the guitar. For the drums, I have the microphones set up in a typical XY pattern. This is achieved by creating a 90 degree angle or an L shape with the mics, and then you get the capsules very close together without them touching each other. Another way of going about making an XY pattern would be to overlap the mics at the capsules and then make a 90 degree angle with them. Then you raise the mics about five to six feet from the ground and use the kick drum as the center position. As you can clearly see in the video, my room is not that great for recording drums in. However, it does represent what most musicians have access to. And I use the XY miking technique here because it limits the room sound and puts the focus more on the kit. Once again, I use the onstage microphone bar to make this process a lot easier. Next, we're going to look at the results that I've gotten inside of my DAW. Okay, so here I am in Logic Pro, and I'm just gonna listen back to the acoustic guitar. I have the microphones panned hard left and right, and I'm just gonna see if there's anything I wanna clean up with some EQ. <laughs> So 
So since this isn't in context with a mix, I'm not dealing with a bass guitar or a kick drum, for example. I'm just gonna brush up a few things with a stereo EQ on the output bus that I have both microphones going to. See, bus one, bus one. So this is a stock channel EQ that comes with Logic Pro. Whatever DAW you use will have something similar. So I'm just gonna listen back again and see if I wanna clear out some low end and maybe give it some presence. So this is what it sounds like without it. And then with it. Move this up a little bit. So yeah, I just cleared out some of that low end rumble and uh, um, brought the upper mid range closer to the listener. It felt a little bit far away before. Now next, I'm just gonna put a little compression on it. And before the compressor, I'm gonna put a level meter. This is gonna show me how much signal I have going into the compressor. I don't wanna send too much. So you're gonna wanna have your peak levels around negative six and your RMS. For the sake of this video, we'll just call that the average level, even though it means root means squared, but that's for a different tutorial. Yeah, you want that around negative 18, negative 20, negative 21, somewhere around there. So this compressor plugin just comes with the logic. Again, whatever DAW you use will have something similar. And I just loaded up a preset called Acoustic Guitar. Let's see what it sounds like. Without it. Yeah, so as you can see, I have a good level going into it, and it's actually giving me the amount of compression that I was expecting. I didn't want to go any, any below negative three, negative four, negative five tops. If it was hitting negative 10 or something like that, then I would want to back off the input. And what that is, it's, it just brings up the level a little bit and evens it out. It's just giving it a nice consistent level. So here's with nothing. And then with the EQ and the compressor. Sounds better to me. So since this video is primarily a review of some microphones, I'm not gonna get into what all these knobs do. If you're interested in learning that kind of thing, then check out one of my creative series tutorials where I take a completed song of mine and I break it down from start to finish, writing, recording, production, and mixing wise. All right, so let's move on to the drums. Again, we just have a left and right microphone and I'm just panning them out a little bit to give them some space away from each other. And now all I did here is I just put a stereo EQ on the master bus. Okay, so after a little fiddling around, I decided on a shelf EQ for the top end and I placed it at 10K, gave it two and a half decibels of boost, and I made the cue very wide so that it will also affect some more presence area. Then I left the little cut I had at 438 hertz and I just left it at 4.4 decibels and a 1.2 cue. And then I just gave it a little bit of low end at 60 hertz with a low shelf. And then I tamed the extreme low end with a high pass filter. And since this isn't in context of a full mix, I'm just gonna leave it like that because it sounds pretty good by itself. However, one thing that I will point out that I didn't really notice on the acoustic guitar is that the area between, let's say 2400 and 4K was a little unpleasing. I suspect that I could solve this with a plugin like Oak Sound Smooth or the DSEQ by TB Audio. However, for the sake of this review, I figured I would just point it out. And I'll say that I've definitely heard worse when it comes to low end microphones. However, this is a problem that is inherent in the budget ended condenser microphones. But honestly, for $102, it doesn't sound that bad. So let's listen back just one more time. This is with it. And this is without it. So you can see I did take care of that cloudy issue and I gave it some top end and a little bit of presence. My final impression is that for the price you pay for these microphones, they are a good deal. 
Although they don't contain the signature qualities that you would find in a high-end small diaphragm condenser, like larger-than-life presence, depth, and warmth, they are not noisy, and they are clear. And they don't cost upwards of $1,500. Although I did like them more on the acoustic guitar as opposed to the drum overheads, due to the slightly harsh results I got in the upper mid-range, I still wouldn't mind using these in that application, so long as I knew that I would be using a notch EQ later on, or perhaps something like Oak Sound Smooth or the DSEQ, as I mentioned earlier. Also, since I've heard this issue before on microphones that cost twice as much, I can't say that this issue would prevent me from telling someone to buy these if they didn't have a lot of money to spend. This leads me to the conclusion that I wouldn't mind using these in a song, and I will be doing that in the future. As I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in checking out my creative process or learning more about the production process, then check out one of my creative series playlists where I break down one of my songs from start to finish and explain what I did along the way, from the writing to the recording to the production to the engineering. Thank you for tuning in, and if you found any of this material helpful, then please give the video a like and subscribe for more stuff. See you next time.